How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs and today I want to get a little heat in my garage. Now I've never had a reasonable heater in here. I've used some 120 volt heaters here and there, but as you know if you've ever used those, they don't really do the job. I have about 620 square feet of space that I want to heat up and really I'll only be heating that up five or ten days out of the winter when I'm doing projects within the garage. Now we'll be leveraging that outlet right behind me. Now that is a 240 volt 50 amp NEMA 14-50. I have a couple different videos that I'll direct you to on how to install one of those and also some of the recommendations that I have especially for electric car charging which is the primary purpose for that outlet. A secondary purpose is to plug in this 7500 watt heater and hopefully get my garage a little more reasonable for those projects like I need to change the spark plugs out in my truck and be great to have a little heat source. Now to do that, I'm gonna to need to do a custom cord as well. So we'll be wiring that into the heater and then getting a custom length of cord, which is a little bit further than the standard six feet that you can get kind of off the shelf with an appliance cord. So I need to use this welder extension cord, modify it a little bit, install a new 1450 plug and get that all wired up so we can test it out. Then we'll finish with a little testing. Right now it's actually not too bad outside. I got 41 degrees outside and about 51 degrees inside. So I want to see if I can get that to the upper 50s or low 60s. How long does that take and what is the estimate on the cost? How much are you going to be spending using this type of electric heater in your garage if you want to heat up that space for the projects you got going on? So let's jump into it and start to get this guy installed between my two garage doors here. First up let's look and see what is in the box. Now these come fully assembled. You can get them usually for about $225 to $250. And you usually get them at a local home improvement store. I got this at Menards, which is a regional big box home improvement in my area. But you can also get them off of, you can find them on Amazon. And I'll put a link in the description for your reference just in case this guy meets the needs that you're looking for as well. Now first up, I'm going to use this bracket, go up on the ceiling, make sure we have our clearances that we need and everything's going to work out. And then we'll go ahead and sink a lag in to secure this so we can mount this up and start making our cord. So for mounting this bracket, I'm going between my two railings here. I'm going to mount it with a single 3 eighths of an inch lag screw securing into wood. Don't be trying any drywall anchors or anything on this. You got to get some solid wood uh, to have this weight stabilized up here. And I'm doing that single point so I will be able to turn this heater if I want to, heating different areas in the garage. So I'm just using my stud buddy. I already found one screw or nail. So I want to find a couple here. Is what I want to do is put a straight line here and see if this makes sense. See if the multiple marks that I have line up with where I know that board is actually going. All right. So I'll just take a four foot level here, line it up to my points. Yep, okay, so everything is jiving. And then I'm just gonna mark where I'm gonna set my pilot hole. Since I'm doing 3 eighths of an inch lag bolts, you wanna make sure that you have a pilot hole. In this case, we'll be using a 1160 forts for the pilot hole. And the nice thing is here, you also are gonna know if you're hitting wood just with your pilot hole. Uh, instead of going larger with the lag, finding out you're off base and then having these holes all over your ceiling. Yep, so that was confirmed. I did hit wood, so I feel good about that. Obviously, you should have some type of eye protection working overhead. And then what we're going to do is place a washer on top. And then that washer on top gives you a little bit of a spacing to your ceiling. So when you rotate this bracket, it's not just gouging up your ceiling. 
And then with their impact driver, we'll go ahead and drive that home. You can kind of preset your angle. It doesn't have to be exactly what you're looking for, but it's good to kind of set it in now. So we are secure. Now we'll wire up that custom cord on the ground, get it plugged in, and then start to test this guy out. So what I need to do is actually shorten this guy up from 20 feet to about 14 feet. So I just need to take, I know this table is about two feet long, so we're gonna take about six feet off this guy. Now I do not have large cable cutters, so we're gonna be given the Knipix wire strippers a test today. Because I'm gonna cut both these ends off and then I'm gonna put a custom NEMA 1450. This will actually just be wired with three wires. I'll show you how to do that and then we'll wire that to the actual heater here. Okay, and then we will need access. There's an access panel right here, just a small Phillips head screw you can take off. That will give you access. There's two different knockouts here, so you can install a clamp to secure your wire coming in. I'm taking the larger one off. I'll go ahead and install that clamp now. So we'll get that insulation off the outside. Just double checking our measurements for our wires. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and strip our two conductors here. That's gonna give 120, 120, and that's where you get your 240s across these two phases. All right, so now with our wires stripped, I'll go ahead and pass them through our clamp. And now with just about half of an inch of insulation coming into the housing, go ahead and cinch down our clamp to keep the wire in place. Now for my ground, I'm actually gonna trim this guy off here because what I will use is an offset lug. So this is actually gonna bond to our grounding screw here and then I'm going to securely fasten the stranded copper with the lug. And then we'll just connect up the two conductors to L1 and L2. Now, if you want to use an external thermostat, which I'm gonna do because this is gonna be up in the air, you're gonna connect that to this one and two on this side. Instead of using one of these knockouts, I'm just gonna drill a small hole so I can get my thermostat wire in here. So that should complete your wiring internally here at the heater, but I do need to get that plug installed on the under end of this custom cable. So we have our plug. This is the NEMA 1450. Now with this, this is only gonna be three wires. So we have our two conductors and our ground. So what I'm gonna do for the wiring, I'm just gonna take out this, what would usually be your neutral terminal. I'll replace that, but just for wiring, I'll take it out. Then I took the insulation off, cut that, made sure I had insulation coming in to the actual plug and I'm gonna cinch down this clamp to make sure we have proper strain relief. Then I'm going to cut each one of these conductors to size and route those internally to the plug. This usually takes a little doing, so take your time. Uh, obviously when you get the larger gauge wire, it's a little hard to maneuver this around, especially when it's cold outside. 
but it is pretty straightforward. You just want to make sure that you have a good clamp here on your external insulation for strain relief and then solid connection at your two phases and your ground. All right, and that is what it should look like once you got everything connected up. And then this top side cover with the four mounting bolts, that's really gonna pull everything together. That'll also make sure that your prongs here are straight and exactly where they need to be because you will have these different channels on that backside of the housing. And then that's gonna line up to all of these terminals and make sure everything lines up correctly. So there you have it. We have our finished plug. Now we're ready to hang the heater and test things out. So first up, we're gonna attach our center points. And then you do have some louvers here off the front, which obviously I'm gonna point down, but then you can also set the angle. So I'm gonna set the angle here on the second setting to see how that works. All right, we'll test it out. Now, one thing to note, you do have the temperature control here at the actual unit. You wanna set that all the way over to the right if you're using a thermostat, which we are. So we'll set that all the way over to the right. I'm gonna set it on 7,500 watts. Then we'll plug things in and test it out. So I'll do my final install, I'll route my main cable here, but we have it plugged into the NEMA 1450. I have my thermostat wire, I'm gonna jump. And just note on the back, whether you're controlling your temperature at the front here, you'll switch it to one side and there's a switch for an external thermostat, which is what we're running right now. And then I also have a current clamp. I wanna see how many amps it's pulling. So all I'm gonna do is just jump my thermostat with this Wago 221 lever nut. So we'll just connect things up. So now we're running. We are set on 7,500 watts. So we're right at about 30 amps that this heater's pulling. Now I'm gonna clean up the routing a little bit of the thermostat cable, install the thermostat, and then also clean up the routing of the actual 240 volt cord to try to get it out of the way. But while I'm doing that, I'm gonna run a test. Right now it's about 41 degrees outside and inside we're looking at about 51, almost 52 degrees. So I'm curious, can this get up to 60 or 65 degrees and how long does that take? I know how much amperage this is pulling, so then I can do an estimate of cost. So I'm gonna spool this guy up, do that test, and I'll report out the results. So you guys can make an educated decision. Is this heater gonna meet your own needs at your house? All right, so we just finished up one hour of running and now I have the thermostat installed so I can turn it off at the ground level. And we actually made it 10 degrees. We were able to heat it up to 61 degrees in one hour. Now we did confirm it pulled about 30 amps. If you did 240 volts multiplied by amps, 30 amps, you'd get 7,200 watts, which is right at that rating we had it set on, We know, knowing that this is a 7,500 watt unit. So what about the cost? I ran it for one hour. So what does that mean in terms of energy consumption? So 7,500 watts, we can convert to 7.5 kilowatts and then multiply by one hour, that gives us 7.5 kilowatt hours which is the unit of measure that you're billed out by your power company. I know I'm billed out about 12 cents per kilowatt hour. So running for that one hour, getting about 10 degrees warmer when it's 41 degrees outside, I spent about 90 cents, little less than a dollar, which is pretty reasonable because I'm using this as supplemental heat for when I'm doing projects out in the garage or maybe when it's really, really cold outside and I might have some paint or something in the garage. And I just wanna raise the temperature a little bit in the garage to make sure it doesn't go below freezing. So hopefully this one helped you out. And for me, this is gonna work perfect for my needs. And also you'll see all the links for this heater and the other parts used during this installation below the video in the description. Now, if you do not have a NEMA 1450 like that and you need it for electric car charging or for a heater like this, Check out this video right here and we will walk you through start to finish on that complete install process. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.